Former WWE board member has gone on the record about his decision to resign from the company. Ig- Ignace Lahoud, I'm sure I messed that up, Lahoud. has been part of the board's audit committee tasked with investigating the allegations against McMahon. Resignation was revealed in an SEC filing in January, with McMahon's return cited as a reason for his departure. He told the LA Times he did not feel it was prudent for McMahon to return to WWE, considering the allegations against him. You don't say. It was not aligned with my way of seeing what governance is, he added. There was a misalignment with what my values are. Another person, quote, close to the board, spoke to the LA Times of McMahon's reaction to hearing the board was launching an investigation. He said, okay, do whatever you guys need to do. I'm not going to stand in your way. Of course, when the board said, well, you know, we think you need to step down, he wasn't happy about it, but he did. Yeah, you know, this is one thing about that I'll say about Vince. Mm-hmm. Vince's whole gimmick is, ah, say whatever you want, I don't care. But then if you say something you don't like, he cares. Yeah. Yeah. And he so, stepped down for everybody's good, then forced his way back in, and then made sure he got a job for life in the way this thing is set up. So, yeah. Jacob Frankel, chair of Dickinson Rights Government Investigations and Securities Enforcement Practice Group. I think they need an acronym. <laughs> Believes the investigations could lead to McMahon having to step down. There are investigations into McMahon by the Department of Justice and the Security and Exchange Commission. Depending on potential findings, McMahon could face criminal and or civil liabilities that could prevent him from serving as an officer or director of a public company, as well as a clawback of any, quote, ill-gotten gains. I think, thankfully for you, the SEC is not a tag team partner of the FCC. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back at the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. WWE had a meeting yesterday, an employee meeting with Nick Khan, Triple H, Kevin Dunn, Brad Bloom. Khan put over Vince. Said it was unfortunate to have departures, but thanked those for their hard work and then he introduced mcmahon talked about harry emmanuel calling him quote my new boss mcmahon said the company had plateaued and that this was the deal needed in order to reach the next level you know what's funny is the company had plateaued and then they got rid of the guy and uh and then when he was gone uh they'd stop plateauing and they went way up now he's back, saying it's plateaued. What a way to throw everyone else under the bus. Including his daughter. They turned that thing around when he was gone. He then introduced Emmanuel, said he had sought advice from McMahon in the past. <laughs> you know, maybe he, was, he wanted to improve his squat. I'm t- teach you how to be vascular, Ari. Get over here. Emmanuel's daughter, Ashley, works in WWE as a creative assistant. So there you go. Sounds like a really exciting meeting. Yeah. You know, there's nothing I like more than meetings. Yeah. Absolutely pointless meetings. Then we've got Randy Orton has been seen at the Performance Center. Now listen. What, is he Elvis? Hey, it's possible that uh, Randy Orton is going to be back soon, okay? that That's certainly possible. But, uh, you know, this is not the first time he's been seen there. and uh, And apparently, like... You know, there's ways to get in and out of the Performance Center without being seen. So, uh, you know, Randy being seen, you know, he wanted to be seen. He's being seen, I mean, which is not like being seen at the Performance Center. It's like really being seen because you're being seen on the scene by people who are at that scene looking to see people. So anyway, maybe he'll be back, maybe he won't, I don't know. But he was definitely seen, you know, unlike John Cena. Randy Orton was definitely seen. Raw got murdered, as we uh, expected. So now there's like a million games. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. But uh, as a result, they they died a death. (laughs) The first hour did 1.37 million viewers. The second hour did 1.37 million viewers. And the third hour did 1.26 million viewers. And those games were cheeks, too, unless you really like defense. Now, I will say, I will say that, uh, you know, as bad as these numbers are, there is actually an improvement in WWE numbers that hasn't been talked about a lot. 
Oh yeah. And that is that their their younger audience is growing. They're eighteen to forty nine, and they're eighteen to thirty four. Those numbers have been growing of late. And what's actually happened is they're losing old people. They're losing that fifty plus audience. They used to have these these big numbers, but like their their strongest audience was was old folks, you know, like me, and uh, and now, you know, they they were up nine percent this week, even though this was like a record low number. They were up nine percent in eighteen to forty nine, and twenty two percent in eighteen to thirty four, and uh, NXT has been way up in eighteen to thirty four and eighteen to forty nine. So you know, whatever you want to say about WWE. Their their demo is shifting younger and has been. They've got less of these uh, less of these old people watching, and the it's not like dying, Brian. It's not like the uh, it's not like eighteen to forty nine, eighteen to thirty four up only because the older people are dropping off. No, they're actually up. They're having increases in those younger demos. So uh, that's at least good. But man, one point three seven, one point three seven, one point two six. I don't have the football numbers now, but. Uh, doesn't matter. They won. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're, uh, there's going to be the old- streaming games. There's going to be, yeah. you know, network games and ESPN and. Although still, you know, they're really touting a lot of the streaming numbers because of Deion Sanders at Colorado and and it's done this well at this time and all this stuff and it's still a drop in the bucket to comparatively speaking to what they are doing on network and on cable so it's yes everything is changing how we're viewing changing we're piecemealing things together but tv is still still massive and and this is where again obviously wwe is looking to try to cash out here when it comes to these rights deals i like the conclusion here that uh well those old people are dying well some it's it's up, 50 and up for crying out loud. It's, it's nature, not 90 bro. and up. People die. What? People don't die at 50? Well, right? they do, but it's not do. like you hit 50 and, and you've got, you know, months Why do you left. dismiss the, the deaths of people, Brian? Why are you I'm doing not dismissing that? the deaths of Obviously people, but you crying are. out loud. Man. 50 up. It's not because they're all dying. Well, it's not. Look, you don't get. It's not 50 and under. You know, it's not, you can't go backwards, Brian. Once you hit that demo, you know where it's going to end. Collision. Four hundred and sixty seven thousand viewers and a point one five. This would be the fourth lowest total audience they have done. (laughs) But it is the same rating as last week. (laughs) There was a lot of college football games on three of the four broadcast networks and several cable stations. The uh, you know steady growth throughout the episode and uh, the quarters. The quarters. Remember when people were like. Ah, you know, all these AEW shows fall, but man, you put CM Punk in the main event of Collision, it's going to be way up. Well, that was true. But uh, the main event for this show was Chris Statlander and Britt Baker, and the main event was the highest rated thing on the show, and the overrun did uh, almost 600,000 viewers. There you go. So uh, the argument that, you know, no one wants to see the women... The show's going to die without CM Punk in the main event. Nah. And it, it ended up doing all right there. Well, look, even with CM Punk, I think this is a 400,000 to 500,000 person show while football's on. That's what this is proving. The 18 to 49 demo, I think this week was 0.15. I mean, that's about what we've been seeing. They want it to be more. WBD wants it to be more. And on weekends where they have a pay per view, maybe it will be more. This week, they have a really good lineup. Hopefully, Grand Slam is hot. Hopefully, the Rampage Grand Slam, something comes out of that where people are energized going into collision on Saturday. That would get that number up. The problem is Ohio State plays Notre Dame in a battle of top six teams with two of the biggest fan bases in the country. It's a huge game. Iowa and Penn State is a big game for those other people that don't want to see that. There's regional football taking place everywhere, including in Georgia, you know, a huge market in in Georgia, and the number one team in the nation is playing at that time. So they just have to keep – again, this is like Raw on Monday. You can do – you have to basically live with the fact that football is going to crush you. So ignore it, put on the best show that you possibly can and try to get as many people in as, as you possibly can. And for AEW, it starts tonight. Hey guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.